you know, to the edge, yeah. and then just measure it. Okay. From, you know, you're going to be in a three-dimensional view at that point. You can measure off the wall. You can use any, you know, any point that's a, a permanent point, you know, in space to do this. Okay. So, you know, in the bottom. So it, for the bottom, it was 16 and an eighth or something, right? For the bottom. Okay. And then, what am I going to do? So step number nine, I'm going to, um, I'm going to add my S cleat for the top of that, right? Or how, you know, how am I connecting it to the duct? Usually with S cleat and drive, right? So to the top of my piece, That's either the top, the bottom, the right, or the left. I'm going to add. I'm going to add my uh, S cleat or add my connection. However, you know, however I'm going to connect it to the duct. If I don't add that, when you get to the field, you're going to be exactly to the top of the duct, yeah. and you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to be able to connect it. Okay. Then, then what am I going to do? I'm going to draw in my offset. So, you know, if I'm looking if I'm looking down on the piece of metal, so you know, if this is the bottom view right here with my piece of metal, first I'm going to draw in my my equipment flange on that piece of metal. So, equipment flange, which is half inch. Then, I'm going to use my um, the height of my true length bar to lay out each side. So I'm going to measure the distance of my true length bar for the bottom. It's an inch and an eighth. So from here to here, it'd be one inch, I mean 16, sorry, not an inch and an eighth, but 16 and an eighth. And then at my top, I'm going to draw in my S cleat, which is, you know, for when you're retrofitting a furnace, I usually three do quarters. three quarters of an inch, but an equipment plant, uh, an S cleat is one inch. But that's just going to give you, you know, a quarter inch of play if you make it, you know. But let's just say for these purposes, I'm going to draw one inch in there. I'm just going to draw me a little. There's my, there's my, um, there's my S cleat. So these, these measurements are all going to be parallel to each other, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh, well, this offsets by four inches that way, right? So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to measure in, and I'm going to measure four inches. So this is the bottom piece. So that's going to be four inches. So I'm going to use my square here now. I'm going to put my square down, and I'm going to find out exactly where that four inches is right there, okay? Then, I'm going to measure over 12 inches, so 12 inches from there, you know, somewhere over here. And then on my bottom, 16 and a half inches from the edge of, you know, from where my point is. This is my four inch point, but this is my starting point, so, you know, it'd be... You know, 16 minus 16 and a half minus four, which is 12 and a half. So from here over, it'd be 12 and one half, or all the way across, 16 and one half. Then all I gotta do is connect the dots. So connect that, connect that wherever it lines up, right? You know, then all of a sudden I don't need all this, right? There, right there, to there, right? And then what's the final step of this? I'm gonna decide if I want male seams or female seams. So I'm gonna add however I'm connecting it together, right? If I'm connecting it together with S cleats, I need to add, you know, and it's the, it's the male side. 
I need to add an inch. If I'm connecting it with um, Pittsburgh, I'm gonna add one inch for the female and a quarter inch for the male. Usually, you know, you're gonna go um, female on opposite sides of the duct and males on opposite sides of the duct. So when you put it together, you know, so number 10 is use a square and plot in your offsets, right? Use square. And then number 11 is to draw in your offsets, right? Or we could say, you know, you're drawing in your angles. So number 11, draw in offsets. So that's when you're actually drawing from there to there and there to there. And then number 12, final step, besides bending it, is to add your seam. <coughs> so if you're gonna add um, Pittsburgh seams, it'd be one quarter inch for your male, and, and and you need to make sure that you add your seams on, you know, the same seam on the opposite side of your duct, right? You're not gonna wanna add a seam to any way, any other way, right? You know, you're going to want to build this one piece at a time. For me, you know, I like to take this and flip it over as I'm drawing it, you know, as I'm building it. I like to build one, one piece at a time so I don't get too, too confused. So if I was building the bottom, I'd flip it over like that. If I was building the top left, I'd flip it over like that, 9 to 8. Of course, this is going to be 11. And... I can't remember what our bottom was. Oh, 13. So, you know, I'm gonna be using these two measurements to draw in the bottom. So, you know, Pittsburgh seams. You know, if you're using them, it'd be one inch female and one quarter inch male. If you're using snap lock seams, which you can, it'd be um, usually it's three eighths male and female is inch and an eighth, but we put in half because it's easier for male. So um, snap lock one and three eighths female and three eighths um, male. And then the final thing is don't, you know, cut them out, but don't, um, don't put your seams on there, you know, until, until you've lined them up. So, you know, label, label each piece, of course. So left and right and bottom and top. So and then just lay them out to each other. Because these pieces, you know, when you're laying them out, you might lay them out backwards from each other. That's, and then you need to put an X on, on the inside of the pieces. See, so some of these, you know, like this one here, the top, I, I laid this out as the top, but it ended up being, you know, opposite because of the way that I laid it out. So that's why you gotta line them up and you have to put an X on the inside of on the inside of it that way you know which way to run it through the machines and then of course any piece that's bigger than 12 inches you know has to be um, has to be cross broken is there any questions on this
Yeah, if you want to take a picture of it, definitely take a picture of it. You know, Steph, why don't you take some time today and write up these steps and any other steps that I haven't included. You know, take the take the video with you. So that you have it all on a sheet of paper. You know, for the ductwork challenge, you have to be able to do it in in twice the time I can do it in. And, and on some of these, you know, I've never laid it out like this before. On some, you know, I've always just used, you know, once I had one piece done, I, I've never done a transitional offset until I started teaching this. All I did was I tried to always get my furnace so that it was square on one side because square on one side with a square on one side you can use that to to uh to plot it in so what time is it oh so this class is over so that's the overview on an offset transition